I want to shift gears and I want to see and hear about what team caught your eye. What, what, what team's in, in grand spotlight this weekend? All right. So speaking of teams in that second half of the playoff standings, I think we both kind of had the same idea when we thought about doing these spotlights. Give me the Chicago Red Stars. Uh, they notch a 3-0 victory Oof. at San Diego over the wave. Now a struggling wave, a wave that is in a lot of flux. I think it's an impressive win nonetheless. Definitely impressive. Definitely, definitely impressive. I couldn't help but, <laughs> couldn't help but think we talked a lot of wave on the show this past uh, few weeks. What's the opposite of a new manager bounce? Is it a new manager thud? A new <laughs> manager splat? I mean, I don't know. The, we, we'll work on the branding, but the bounce didn't quite bounce. This past weekend, yeah. they looked as flat as a pancake. But not that's not to take away anything from Chicago, who I think played really, really well. And they got some magic from that future Olympian up front. Hundred percent. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run through a couple of things here. So and I, let's just get the rest of the San Diego stuff out of the way. So yeah, mm-hmm. very interesting week to say the least. They fired their shield winning manager Casey Stoney days prior, but they also had to kind of deal with the news that Alex Morgan was not selected to the Olympic squad. I feel like that was something that was kind of like hovering around. You have to answer questions about it. Not saying it takes anything away, but then you kind of have this interesting situation of like, there's Germa, there's Jaden Shaw. And now you kind of have Alex Morgan, the icon there, just dangling out there. So so there's that. Red Stars manager, and I, I believe I can fairly say into the channel favorite, Lauren Donaldson, oh, yeah. said pre-match that he expected San Diego to come out like, quote, a pack of wild hyenas, end quote. Uh, this was mentioned a couple times to Chuckles over the broadcast. I think it, <laughs> it is a funny quote. I'll say this about our pal Lauren. That was pretty much the only thing he got wrong on Friday (laughs) because the wave did not come out like hyenas. Unless hyenas are known for not being organized, which maybe maybe that was what he secretly meant. But <laughs> do hyenas hibernate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting question. Who knows? But I think when you looked at the Red Stars, they were good on set pieces. They did creative stuff, whether it was corners or free kicks. Uh, Hannah Anderson at center back, Kerry Ricaro in the midfield, they were doing nice work defensively. You already know what time it is if you know Lauren Donaldson's background with the Jamaican national team in the 2023 World Cup. That dude knows how to get defensive Mm buy-in and get a defense organized. Chicago had 39% of the ball in this match. (laughs) They only had 27% of the ball in the second half. But I will say, the Wave, they looked a little dangerous in some spots. They had maybe a a little less than a handful of spots where I thought maybe somebody could have scored, but they did not look that threatening. And a lot of those shots that they took barely even phased to listen there. Yeah. I mean, even... You look at Morgan's penalty kick. Yeah. Talk about uh, not phasing a listen here. I don't really want to have the Alex Morgan conversation again, but I think there just might be something to. She's such a huge figure. Mm. We've talked about you know the Mamba in L.A. R.I.P. Kobe. Towards the back half of his, not the back half, towards the end of his career, right. he became so big in stature that the players just had to find a spot to stand where they weren't going to just, you know, rustle up against Kobe and, and kind of what he was doing. Sure. I think there is a little bit of that with this wave side. And now with Casey Stoney out, I'm not going to say I expect them to figure out, you know, how to re reorient the offense and find situations where they can extract more value, more productivity from Morgan. I think she's still definitely got it in the tank, oh, but yeah. for sure the setup that they've got, it's not working at all. <laughs> yeah. They look like a complete and absolute mess. They don't look like a team that could beat any other team in the league, I don't think. Utah, Bay FC, I think on a neutral field, I'm picking probably any other team right now, considering how they've looked. We see this often, not only in football, in other sports as well, where a team will quit on their coach. Yeah. Now, I kind of raised the question when the Casey Stoney news broke, it doesn't quite feel right. It kind of feels like one of those moves where, all right, we signed a bunch of players. We made, you spent a lot of money. It's not working. Uh, I don't know. Fire the coach. I wouldn't be surprised if it, if that was the thought process. And I also commented, all right, we're going to see. We're going to see how much of the issue was the manager. And I think usually the new manager bounce is often correlated with like, all right, get this fucking guy out of here or whoever, right? Like, like let's just right. let's just start over. But I, it does feel like this isn't a team that has quit on their coach, but maybe this is a team that has quit on their organization mm. because they looked worse to my eye than they than they had in, in previous weeks. 
that's not usually what you see when a manager kind of gets bounced. Very curious to to get your opinion on that. It's an interesting point. It's bold too. You win the shield the year prior. Can it go south that quickly? We've seen it happen with teams, like to your point, across multiple sports. It's a tale as old as athletics itself that, you know, you lose the buy-in, something happens in the locker room. We haven't done any reporting on that. They looked worse. We started this by talking about the Chicago Red Stars and what they're able to do. And we've also talked, well, we talked about the new manager bounce. Teams try to time it. And maybe the powers that be in San Diego thought, okay, we have a home match against a mid-table team like Chicago. Fire Stoney. We try to do the reset. Maybe we get a draw out of this. Maybe we get a win out of this. We change the trajectory. There might not be a coach that I would want to coach against less than Lorne Donaldson when there's a little bit of disarray in my team, mm-hmm. and he can just work with with very talented defenders and one of the best goalkeepers in the league in Chicago and be like, oh, you guys are frustrated? I have like six more things that my side can do that I know my players are good enough to execute that are just going to continue to frustrate the hell out of you. And I will tell you, if you look at Chicago's uh, stats, this is courtesy of our pals over at FB Ref, Chicago has never had more than 50% of the ball in a league match this season. Wow. The most they have had the ball was 47% possession <laughs> versus the Thorns. And that was in a 2-0 loss at home in Chicago or outside wow. of Chicago where they play. So Bridgeview. <laughs> speaking of playing at home versus away, Chicago is two wins, zero draws, five losses at home. And now, after this victory in San Diego, they are four wins, two draws, two losses away. And I just think you have a combination of players and a scheme and just a style and identity that if you're already frustrated, you're not in for any relief when you go up and play against them. That's a great point. I was thinking about this Chicago team specifically. They kind of remind me of the Leicester City team that won the title. That's for you've got Swanson, Jamie Vardy spot, you know, maybe Angola Conte is, I don't know, we'll swap him in for Sam Staub, maybe, you know, in terms of like just impactful, even though the midfield defender there, great goalkeeping. But it's really just like, we're just going to sit back. We're going to kind of like play it cool. We're not going to panic. You can go full hyena on us. Sure. But then when the time comes, we know what to do. And they, they absolutely got it done. Like this Chicago team, when you think about, Did Chicago really take this one or did the wave kind of give this one away? It's pretty much 100% of both. Sure. Like, I think the wave kind of rolled over and Chicago came in and laid the smack down. Like, this team should not be three goals better on the road at San Diego. But credit to them. They were like, all right, well, if you're going to come out here at 70 to 80% speed and not really match our level, not really match our intensity, we're going to embarrass you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what we saw. I love that they play. I I think it's right. I think they play with that attitude. And I think when you watch Staub and Swanson on the field, I know we we always point them out specifically, they play with that kind of attitude themselves. Nair? Yeah, Nair too. I mean, she will stare you down, stop your penalty kick, and then go and blast one past your keeper. (laughs) So so let me ask you some – let me give you a, a hypothetical here. Oh, and first, before I do that. Ali Schlegel didn't even play in this match. Mm-hmm. She has four goals on the season, matching Penelope Hawking's four goals. Mallory Swanson has six. Let me give you a situation here. So I have a team, and my team has one of the five best forwards in the league. I've also gotten at least one goal out of 10 players on my squad. Mm. I have one of the best two or three goalkeepers in the league. I have a defense anchored by one of the best center backs in the league. I have a manager with a proven track record of playing a successful defensive counterattacking style. And my team has proven it can win on the road. Mm -hmm. So serious question. Do you think this team has enough to win three games in a row? I would say depends on the opponent. Sure. I think there are some offenses where if you give them enough of the ball, Mm -hmm. they'll just outlast you, break you down, wear you down. I'm thinking of Kansas City specifically. Yep. Just a quick sidebar there. The Dash, pretty good showing. You know, defensively, like they're pesky, they're scrappy. You know, Tarsiane made a mess of a couple <laughs> a couple of situations there. But 90 plus minutes of Temo Shawingo will do that to pretty much anybody. Yeah. But I think defensively, they held up pretty well. 
but ultimately, you know, they broke through. If you kind of play that game against some of the teams at the very top, there's only so much Mouse wants in Magic. You know, I'm glad you mentioned Hawking. You know, I think she's she's been a great Robin to, you know, Mouse wants since Batman here. Like, a, you know, just a great a secondary option. Yep. Really productive, really exciting player as well. I think it's possible. I mean, Swanson would have to hit God level, basically, which right. is not out of the question. <laughs> yes, I would agree. <laughs> you couple a few Nair performances, mm-hmm. some Lauren Donaldson whiteboard magic, some Mal Swanson on the pitch magic, and they could they could absolutely win three in a row. You know, especially you know come crunch time down the stretch or in the playoffs. But would I pick it? Not sure I would pick it. And for good reason, my good man, because they have yet to win three games in a row this season. Mm. I'm not saying it's completely out of the realm of possibility, but the reason I bring this up is that if you think about all those factors, I do think when you enter the playoffs, and we've talked about this, I think you and I have agreed with our pal John Rollins over at uh, Loud and Proud Orlando, that the NWSL Shield, that feels like the title. That feels like the best representation of who's the best team. But winning the NWSL championship, that's a three-match cup, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah, Going from eight to four to two with one winner, obviously. Now, three Supernova Swanson performances in a row, I don't think is completely off the board. Three Supernova Nair performances in a row, definitely not off the board. To get them at the exact same time, we're starting to run low on our probability charts if if you want to look at it this way. But I think if you are a Chicago Red Stars fan, we'll play our one of our favorite games if the playoffs started today, they would be playing the team that you're wearing on your shirt right now. Mm. And I do think that is one of the squads that you mention if you give enough chances. If they are in your defensive third for most of the match, it's almost impossible to withstand Bonda and Marta Doyle, Adriana, all those great players. So I will say, I think they're live going into the playoffs. I think that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have quite enough to contend. I think they pretty clearly don't have enough to contend for the Shield now, but they have the bones of a team that can compete for the Shield moving forward. We'll see uh, how much money they start spending, who who they're able to acquire. But I think if you're a Red Stars fan, I think you go into the playoffs going, I don't know, can we win in Orlando? Maybe we can. But I also think you would like to maybe scoot up the standings a little bit to avoid Bonda in the first match of the playoffs. Yeah, I I would even say it's going to be interesting because a team like Chicago, a team with like real defensive DNA, you know, can flip the field with Swanton and Hawking up there very quickly. They got to be trying to think about positioning against KC, in my opinion, because that Orlando defense, I tweeted it. I think we're at 295 or 297 straight minutes, not counting stoppage time, Mm -hmm. of clean sheet football in the NWSL where teams are just going bananas scoring goals. Yeah, I think Swanson would probably be more excited about a current matchup than a pride matchup. Yeah, But to your point, it's not just winning three in a row now. It's winning three in a row against playoff teams, against top right. eight teams. That's a good point. And if you're and all of a sudden, you know, if you're in that five to eight range, you also have to go on the road. And this isn't the same. This isn't exactly the same as w- what's happening in North Carolina, where you've got an MVP, maybe possibly working your way back. The Chicago team is loosely the team. I definitely agree with you. I think they could get hot. I could see this team definitely winning one playoff matchup uh, in upset fashion, and then from there, it's like, can you string two together? Right. We see this corollary in in the NBA a lot. Who's the best player? Who's the best mm-hmm. player on the floor? Who's the best player on the pitch? If you got the best player on the pitch, you've always got a chance. That is where you raise such a good point about it. it's not just winning three in a row. It's winning three in a row against playoff teams. If you have to play against Barbara Bonda, as much as we like mm-hmm. Mel Swanson, Mel Swanson is now firmly the second best player on the pitch. That's no slight against Mel Swanson, obviously. No shame in, in being second place there. So obviously you should be encouraged by four draws, or pardon me, by four wins, two draws, two losses on the road. Not the ideal scenario. You might want to play a home playoff match, but something to look for. And I just think there's there's some good reason for optimism in Chicago. But I, I do want to touch oh, yeah. on another point you made. The interesting thing, and I'm 
it is much maligned on this podcast that we don't have any real visibility into the NWSL salary cap on these teams and their situation and how much money they're spending and all that stuff. I don't know. Maybe when the August 1st transfer window opens up or maybe in these coming weeks, we might see who is out there available for Chicago to sign. I, I got to think it's a relatively attractive location to lure free agents, especially if they're passing out bags with it. So it'll be interesting to see how much of this is their team. They piqued my interest. With Anytime you win 3-0 away, I don't care if the other team is in disarray. You get a 3-0 win away, I'm probably going to put the spotlight on you for the week. Yeah, that's a great call. I was just doing uh, some quick Googling here. It does appear that Frank Kirby is still in the free agent pool. Oh, boy. I think I think that a player be, like that would be that interesting would be a fit in Chicago. Fit. Yeah. Well, you know, we're out here uh, flexing some GM chops. Just saying, <laughs> in case there's any uh, any openings anywhere. Yeah, we're available. Absolutely. I want to shift gears, though. So we hit our teams that we want to spotlight. Now, I also want to do that on the player side. This week, I took a close look at Kansas City Current's Claire Hutton. 